Good morning, church. Welcome to this edition of Checking In with Pastor Jim. I'm glad to be with you this morning. It is another perfect day in Richmond, Virginia. I don't know how many of these we're going to get, but today is perfect. It's going up to a high of 81 degrees today, which seems a little warm for October, but um, perfect. If you can get out in it, by all means, get out in it today. Cecil Sears, so good to see you this morning on our program. Good to see you, Linda. Welcome to you, Courtney, Sandra, and others who are joining us now, including Martha Klo. Welcome to all of you. Shout out from Pastor Jim. Look at this. Here's Cecil. Good morning to you. Here's Linda. Good morning. Welcome. Today is October the 7th, 2020, and it was only as I was looking at that date that I remembered this is kind of a significant day in my life, October the 7th. I believe it was on this day, who knows how many years ago, that Christy and I had a day together. We weren't married yet. We were just dating. Well, maybe more than dating. Maybe we were courting if that's still a word. But it was uh, a beautiful October day, just like this one. It was a Saturday. We borrowed her mother's MG convertible. Can you believe that? MG convertible. And we drove from Georgetown, Kentucky down to Lexington. We went to Fayette Mall, where we had had our first date. And didn't plan it this way. I certainly didn't, didn't plan it this way, but we walked into that mall and the first thing we saw was Leroy's Jewelers, a jewelry store. And I said to Christy on a whim, let's walk in here. And we did. And this woman behind the counter said, can I help you too? You know, with that sort of expectant look on her face. And I said, oh, we're looking for engagement rings. I don't know where that came from. It just popped out of my mouth. But she put some rings out there. We looked at those. There was one in particular that I liked. Christy liked it too. I asked if we could put it on her finger. And when we did, it looked so good. I began to think it ought to be on there permanently. What kind of thing comes over a man? to make him start thinking like that. It happened to me, October the 7th. Let's see if I can pinpoint the date. It must have been 1982. Yeah. So we just said, thank you very much. And we left the store. But do you know, on Monday, I came back to that store and asked to see that ring. And I put a down payment on it and took it home with me. I remember calling my brother Scott and said, I said, Scott, I'm, I'm thinking about asking Christy to marry me. And he said, how serious are you? I said, well, I've got a little box with an engagement ring in it. He said, that sounds pretty serious. It was pretty serious. And can I tell you, one of the best decisions I have ever made in my life. Let's raise a coffee cup and drink a toast to Christy Treadwell Somerville, uh, who eventually got that ring and said yes and has made me the happiest man in the world ever since. October the 7th, 1982, a day that will live in history. Today is um, October the 7th, 2020. What is that? About 38 years later, here we are. We are still here. By the grace of God, we are still here. Some of us are persevering. Some of us are enduring. Some of us, as Larry West likes to say, are surviving. Um, but here we are all the same, and we are surviving on this gorgeous day. I got up early this morning. I went to the November Project, which I sometimes refer to as Millennial Boot Camp. It happens on Wednesday. And today we were encouraged to um, see if we could achieve a personal record in a five-kilometer run. Well, just to 
break the suspense. I did not achieve a personal record today, but I did run five kilometers. Uh, at the end of it, I found myself talking to a security guard who was standing there just off the grounds of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, really over on the grounds of the building we call the Daughters of the Confederacy building. And he's been there for a while. In fact, I've noticed um, the presence of security staff there over the last several months. And I just asked him, I said, how long do you think this is going on, the need for security here at the Daughters of the American Confederacy building? And he said, I, I don't know. I hope it'll be over soon. We started talking, and here's the thing that happened. Here's the thing that can often happen when you strike up a conversation with someone. You begin to see the person in there. It was hard in this case because it was still almost dark outside. This man was wearing a dark uniform. He had dark skin. He was wearing a dark mask. But we stood at a distance of about six feet and had a conversation. And the more we talked, the more I began to see who was inside that body. And that's the thing. Inside every body, there is a person. Sometimes it takes a while to find the person inside the body. And sometimes it is harder than others. We talked for a while. And we talked about a lot of things. And finally, he said to me, hey, my name is Joe. And I said, my name is Jim. I said, I just come out here and, and work out with these millennials. I'm probably the oldest one here. He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 61. How old are you? He said, I'm 63. And I said, well, here we are, members of the Over 60 Club, just having a nice chat on a Wednesday morning. See, it doesn't take long to sort of break through that barrier and find the person on the other side. When I was running home afterward, I, I started thinking about a time I had been in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. I love that museum. But I was walking around inside one of those rooms, those big galleries, looking at the artwork hanging on the walls, and I noticed there was a security guard standing by the door who looked like a statue. I mean, he was stock still, looking straight ahead. His face was impassionate. He was unmoved. And I began to wonder if there was a person in there. And then I challenged myself to see if I could find the person inside that security guard. And let me just say, this is kind of a fun challenge. I might want to encourage you to do this if you ever get back out there again and have the opportunity. Find the person inside that other. So here he was, the security guard, standing there, and I finally made my way over to him and I said, I love this museum. He said, Mm-hmm. I said, no, really. I mean, every time I come to Washington, I, I like to walk around inside this museum and admire the... I love it. He said, mm-hmm. I said, I, I like the paintings in this room, but this may not be my favorite room. He said, mm-hmm. I said, do you have a favorite room? Is there a, a painting or a, a piece of art that you love especially and that's when it happened he, he said you know over in the the modern art wing of this museum there there's a sculpture of three dancers and he said one of them is um is in this position and suddenly he turned like this you know he put one leg out behind him. I can't really show you on this camera. He put his arms out in front. He balanced there on one leg with one leg out behind, his toe pointed and his arms in front reaching forward. And he looked over his shoulder, just like the statue. I had seen it before. He struck that pose and he said, that's my favorite statue. I love that one.
was a beautiful moment. It was a moment um, when all that stiff, formal security guard persona dropped away and revealed the person inside, like a butterfly coming out of a chrysalis. There he was, this person. So I just want to remind you, inside every body, there is a person. And if you begin to look around like that and begin to look for the person inside every body, you begin to see it. So I want to challenge you to do that today. Even if you're just watching the news, even if you're just looking out the window, see if you can find the person inside. That's what God loves, of course, the person inside. Not so much the body. Bodies come and go right? They get older, they get weaker, they get sicker. There is a person inside everybody, and that person is God's own creation. See, if you can find the person inside somebody today, and when you do, tell them Pastor Jim sent you. Okay? Thanks. Have a great day today, and do this for me, if you will. This afternoon at three o'clock, we are recording worship in the sanctuary. Probably the last time, at least for a while, we're going to be doing that on a Wednesday afternoon. I'm grateful for that because it's not my usual rhythm. So I want to ask for your prayers today. Last week I said, please pray for me. I haven't found the ending to the sermon yet. Today I want to say, please pray for me. I haven't found the second half of the sermon yet. I'm preaching from Philippians 4, and in this passage there are four distinct units. I've made my way through two. I've got two more to go before three o'clock this afternoon. I'm feeling a little panicky. So pray for your preacher today, if you will. And I hope to get to three o'clock this afternoon with my sermon in hand. Do that for me, if you will. And then remember, tomorrow, Thursday, is my usual day off. I try to remember my Sabbath and keep it holy. If you have suggestions about who you would like to hear from tomorrow, somebody who could check in for Pastor Jim, just put them in the comments box below. Say, this is who I'd like to hear from. I don't always read your comments while I'm checking in, but I always read them afterward. If you've got something to say to me, say it in the comments box. I'll find it in a few minutes when I say goodbye. Friends, I'm glad to see you today. Make good use of this perfect day. Find the person inside somebody and pray for the preacher. That's all I'm asking. Thanks so much for being with me this morning. Until next time, this is goodbye from Pastor Jim.